Welcome to Alimentary, the podcast series where you'll not only learn about your amazing body, how it works, and of course why nutrition is so important, but also pick up some simple recipes, lifestyle tips and tweaks to support you to influence your health in a positive way. On this short episode of Elementary, I am going to chat about how we can support our bone health or our bone density. Now, this can be a problem for many reasons, including poor diet, compromised digestion, which means that we can't absorb nutrients from our food. So obviously then the nutrients we need for our bones can't be absorbed. Um, and also the, um, you know, aging influences our bone health, you know, particularly for women when as our estrogen declines in uh, menopause and postmenopause. So we're probably most familiar with a condition called osteoporosis um, in relation to bone disease. And this is where bones become weak and brittle. So in advanced osteoporosis, even a fall or a mild stress, such as bending over or coughing, can cause a bone to fracture. Osteoporosis related fractures most commonly occur in the hip, wrist or spine and are most commonly diagnosed in older people. But younger people who are malnourished, for example, or missing some critical nutrients in their diet can also have issues. So you might be aware that um, with vitamin D deficiency, you know, there's a risk for rickets, for example. So it's really important at all ages, you know, to ensure that we include bone healthy foods in our diet um, in order for us to remain mobile and strong as we age, kind of like putting money in the bank for a pension. So let's start with the fact that bones are actually living tissue and this is constantly being broken down and replaced just like all the other cells in our bodies. When a person is diagnosed with, for example, osteoporosis, the rate at which new bone is being created doesn't keep up with the rate of removal of old bone. Now, our bones make up our skeletal system, and this is our support structure for our body. So it gives the body its shape, allows movement, stores minerals, makes blood cells and provides protection for our organs. So, for example, our ribs, you know, protect our, protect our organs in our torso. Our bones work with our muscles and together they are referred to as the musculoskeletal system. Now, many nutrients play a role in our bone health and we're most familiar probably with calcium and vitamin D, but there are other vitamins and minerals which are really necessary in order for um, calcium and vitamin D to, to work. And also they play a part in, in the structure of the bones. So eating a variety of whole foods, so fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds, and lean proteins, eating these foods regularly will help us to get enough of most of the nutrients we need to keep our bones healthy and functioning well. Just for your information, I'm going to go through the whys um, in terms of these nutrients and, and what they do, you know, what their jobs are um, quite quickly. Um, and there, there are a few, but don't panic about having to remember them all. Um, I have written a blog on my website to accompany this podcast, and I'll put a link in the show notes. And in the blog, I list the nutrients and also the foods um, where you can find those nutrients. So what you can do is just maybe print off the list and just highlight the ones that you like, you know, from from each section and just make sure to include them in your shopping trolley. Now, you'll find that nature is really clever and um, several of the foods mentioned will uh, appear in a few of the sections, you know, against a few of the different minerals and vitamins. So um, nature um, often provides a couple of the nutrients needed for bones in, in one lovely package. So let's start with calcium, which is one of the main ones and the one we're obviously most familiar with. Now, just to say that there are many sources of calcium in addition to dairy. So don't worry if you're intolerant and um, if you can't have dairy like myself and um, you can actually absorb as much calcium from plants as you can from milk. So um, so particularly like sesame seeds, nuts and leafy greens are great sources. Now, calcium and phosphorus are building blocks for our bones. And if our blood serum levels of calcium, that is the amount of calcium in our blood, if that gets too low, then calcium will be resorbed or taken down from our bones because we need calcium for other functions too, including our cell health, heart health, muscle contraction and nerve function. Now, this removal or resorption can contribute to low bone density, particularly if it's on a, you know, a, a long term or an ongoing basis. 
Now, it is safest to get your calcium from food, but if you need to supplement, just get advice from your doctor or a health healthcare practitioner. Um, because, you know, some studies show that large doses of calcium pills on a you know long term ongoing basis, you know, they can they can cause other issues, you know, with kidney stones, maybe and um you know, just even uh, when it comes to the heart. So you just want to always get advice about the amount of calcium that you are uh, supplementing. Also, when you're supplementing with calcium, take it at night because that's when it's best absorbed and it might help your sleep as well. Now, as you said, calcium and phosphorus work really closely together to build strong bones and teeth. And after calcium, phosphorus is among the most abundant minerals in our body. About 85% of the um, phosphorus uh, in our body can be found in our bones and teeth and the other 15% is distributed in cells and tissues around the body. Now it actually carries out many important functions but in relation to bone health it's needed for the growth, maintenance and repair of bones. In order to actually absorb calcium in our gut we need vitamin D and this helps our gut to absorb the calcium from our food and so regulate our blood serum level. We know that the best source, source of vitamin D is sunlight. So in Ireland, um, especially, we generally need to supplement at least from September through to March when the sun is too low in the sky to, to benefit from it. Um, again, we can overdose on vitamin D. It's probably unlikely in Ireland, you know, but at the same time, it is best to get advice about safe levels if you're going to be uh, supplementing on an ongoing basis. We can get some from a small number of foods, but as I said, it is one uh, vitamin that we, we do probably need to supplement in this part of the world. Actually, there's a previous podcast about vitamin D and that goes through things like sunscreen and all of that as well. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Now, vitamin K activates a protein called osteocalcin, which builds and heals your bones. There are two types um, of vitamin K, K1 and K2, and K2 is also naturally uh, found in our gut, as a, you know, when we have good gut bacteria. Protein is a macronutrient which we use to build, rebuild and repair. And so obviously that's needed to rebuild and repair our bones too. Um, if you can imagine, it's like the scaffolding and the, the protein is like a scaffolding and this allows the calcium and the phosphorus to stick to it and harden and form the shape. Now, we need to make sure that we're consuming good sources of protein like meat, preferably grass fed or organic when you can, and um, eggs, fish, nuts, seeds, legumes, maybe quinoa and buckwheat too, if, if someone is a vegan or a vegetarian. Now, actually, sardines or tinned salmon are a good example of a food that contains uh, several of the nutrients uh, that are needed for good bone health, like the protein, calcium, and actually some of the omegas as well. Now, boron is a mineral that we need to help us make the most out of the minerals in our food and so reduce the amount of minerals that we lose when we pee. So this, of course, helps our um, overall health, including our bone health. Copper is another mineral that we need. Um, uh, it helps minerals, including calcium, to attach to the protein structure or the scaffolding to, to you know, shape our bones. But we only need a small amount. So again, you know, when you're getting your copper from your food, nature knows uh, not to overdo it. You know, so you'd never overdose on copper when you're when you're eating it in your food. Magnesium is super important for so many functions. And again, I have a previous podcast on that. Um, it helps our body to use the calcium and vitamin D. So basically, it, it, you know, it's needed to help our bones to harden and um, to strengthen our bones. It's not generally tested, um, but low levels can be a risk factor for osteoporosis. So, you know, it's just really important, again, to make sure that you're including magnesium rich foods in your healthy and balanced diet. Now, potassium has been found to reduce acidity in our bloodstream and the amount of calcium we lose when we pee. So, of course, this is going to be good for our bones, too. So silicone and zinc are minerals which help the calcium uh, and the other minerals attached to the protein structure which makes up our bones. Some of the B vitamins are actually important for our bones as well. So, for example, B12 supports our bone building cells or osteoblasts. Um, both B9 and B12 help to control levels of homocysteine in our blood and higher levels of homocysteine can be linked to falls. And obviously um, that you know, can lead to an increased risk of breaking bones, particularly in older people, you know, if their bones are more brittle. And um, I have uh, put a link into the B12 podcast as well, because it's really important to be aware of your B12 levels as you age for many, many reasons. 
Now, antioxidants can help protect our cells from free radical damage. And of course, that includes the cells in our bones. So uh, vitamin C and vitamin E are great antioxidants. And um, vitamin C also supports the formation of collagen. And that is a protein which is important in bone form formation. Um, fatty acids help our body absorb fat soluble vitamins uh, like vitamins D, E and K. So um, obviously we want to make sure that we have some uh, fatty acids, particularly omega-3 in our diet um, and also some omega-6 as well. As we age and as estrogen declines, phytoestrogens have a slight estrogenic effect on the body. So and, um, you know, particularly in menopausal and postmenopausal women um, whose estrogen levels have dropped uh, dramatically, it would be important to include some phytoestrogens in our diet. We should also, of course, avoid smoking and limit alcohol. Now, our weight can influence our bone health. So, for example, if we are under an ideal weight for our height, uh, for example, if our BMI is less than 20, then our bones mightn't have enough protection if we fall. If we're over our ideal weight for our height, then this may put extra strain on our joints, which can prevent us from doing those, you know, those load bearing exercises. The good news is that eating all of these vitamins and minerals and exercising, you know, even if it's just a brisk walk every day is really good for many aspects of our health. I mentioned compromised digestion at the beginning of the episode and I just wanted to say that, I mean, this can be caused by so many lifestyle factors, such as too much stress, dehydration, not enough fiber in the diet, um, even smoking, to conditions such as diverticulosis, which can become diverticulitis, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, even abdominal surgery, you know, among many other medical issues. For the purposes of this episode, I'll just say that if you have any issues with your digestion, it is important to get help to correct it, um, not only for your bones, but for your overall health so that you can absorb the vitamins and minerals from your food that you need. And we'll come back to some of those um, digestive issues in future episodes. So the store cupboard staple for this episode are cashew nuts. And we mentioned earlier that nuts and seeds, uh, in addition to vegetables and legumes, are really helpful for maintaining good bones, good strong bones. Now, I didn't know this until recently, but cashew nuts are actually found attached to cashew apples. And these apples grow in tropical climates such as Brazil in South America. India and Africa in countries like Mozambique, uh, Tanzania and Nigeria. And they're from the same family as the mango and the pistachio nut. You're more than likely familiar with what they look like, but they're light brown in color. They are shaped like little kidneys and they're softer than other nuts, which makes them actually really blendable in nutri bullets, for example. Now, they're lower in fat and higher in protein and carbs than other nuts. And obviously, it's healthy fat that they contain, but um, it is monounsaturated. And this can help to reduce bad cholesterol levels and lower the risk of heart disease or stroke. The fat is mostly derived from oleic acid, uh, which is what gives it its heart healthy protection and can also help to protect against cancer. Now, cashews have, um, they contain other great nutrients, like, for example, copper. And we need copper for red blood cells, for nerve cells, for collagen production. And we need collagen for our bones as well as for our skin. And um, uh, we also, um, copper also helps our immune system and it has antioxidant properties too. And antioxidants help to fight a free radical damage. Cashews contain magnesium. And we need magnesium for our muscles, nerves, bones, blood sugar and blood pressure levels. Um, potassium helps maintain electrolytes and uh, the fluid inside our cells and muscle contractions and also helps to regulate blood pressure. Now, cashews contain iron, which is needed for growth and development. Um, it also um, makes uh, the hemoglobin which is the protein in our red blood cells, which carries the oxygen from our lungs to all the cells in our body. So obviously really important. You might see that on your blood test results, you know, your hemoglobin levels. And also myoglobin, which is a protein which provides oxygen to our muscles. Um, iron is also needed to make some hormones. Cashews contain zinc, which is really helpful for our immune system, for our metabolism, which is how we convert food into energy, for wound healing, and also um, uh, our sense of taste and smell. 
Now, you'll have heard me say before that nature is amazing in the way it packages nutrients which work together. Um, and cashews also contain biotin, which is vitamin B7. Now, this plays a vital role in supporting enzymes to break down fats, carbohydrates and proteins in food. So the vitamin B7 in the cashews helps, you know, supports the breaking down so that we can use those those other nutrients. Biotin also helps to regulate signals sent by the cells and the activity of genes. So what do we do with cashews once we've put them into our shopping trolley? Well, first of all, there's very little, you know, we can do lots with them that doesn't take a lot of preparation. So we can make our own homemade trail mix. Um, so that can be a mixture of nuts and seeds, maybe some coconut flakes, you know, a couple of pieces of dried fruit and even some dark chocolate chips. You know, if you if you want to get just get a tiny little hint of chocolate in there, too. You can add cashews are great to add to a stir fry. So just before you take it off the heat, you know, throw in a handful of cashews and they'll stay, you know, they'll add a little lovely texture to your stir fry. Um, you can add it, you can top pancakes with um, with cashews, maybe pop them on the pan just for a minute with a tiny little drizzle of maple syrup to sweeten them and then, and then top your pancakes with them. They're also, as I mentioned earlier, they're also great to add to Nutri Bullets because they blend really well. And of course, we want to add some protein whenever we're making um, a, a smoothie. You know, we want to make sure that we have some protein in there as well, because protein and fiber help to slow down the release of glucose into our blood, which helps, you know, to support uh, balanced blood sugars. So we don't get those crashes that make us want to eat something that we maybe shouldn't. So I'll pop uh, some links to some other recipes, which include cashews in the show notes. And hopefully there's enough information there to uh, convince you, you know, to make sure that you have them in your store cupboard and pop them in your shopping trolley this week. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I just wanted to clarify that the podcast is for informational purposes only and does not substitute professional care from a doctor or trained health professional, nor does it constitute medical advice or services if you're in in a position to need either. However, if you find it interesting, you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss future episodes or sign up for my newsletter on lynnsharkynutrition.ie.